So this presentation is by Ellen Newlands and Dimitri Pal, and one of your first tests is to figure out which one is which. <laughs> I wanted to let you all know that this is vision. Some of the technologies exist today. Much of it is visionary and roadmap. These are the areas that we are working in. And I want to focus today on identity management. This is the management of us identities, the management of access control, and how this fits into identity and access control management for governance and over time compliance. That is the vision of what we are working on for identity, is to bring it into the whole fabric of security and provide it as features and functions that will help you manage security for the business in conjunction with the business aims and goals. It's a very high level statement. We will get into much more of the detail. But I just wanted to set the stage that this is the vision and this is where we are going. So we'll be discussing the strategy for identity management and access control, the vision, the direction, and some guidance on how we think you could use some of our tips and, and tricks for best practices for the implementation of identity and access management in the fabric of security in your organization. What are we doing? We're going to discuss some of the upcoming features that we believe are on the roadmap. You've all heard this before. Legal says it's not real until it's real. Anything may change. Things may not come into fruition, but these are the areas that we think we'll be seeing in the relatively near future. And how to use all of this technology, all of these features and benefits that we are working to provide. So identity management and authentication are hard and complex. Don't be fooled. It is not necessarily easy to implement a fabric of identity management across your enterprise, across all of your platforms, applications, et cetera, in an easy way. Years ago, I had a professor at school who used to say, fashion your seat belts, intellectual turbulence ahead. So I'd like to say floor lighting will guide you to an exit, but I'm afraid that's something we'll see. But remember, at the moment, Identity management and authentication are not necessarily easy with a one-click install. I'm sure you know that. Everybody has to protect their environment. Whether this is complex or difficult to do, in some ways makes no difference. And increasingly, we find that security is absolutely required. And it's required in conjunction with corporate governance, with corporate compliance, and also fundamentally to protect the assets of your organization. We want to make that process as easy and as secure as we can. And we are working on making secure, automated, and cost-effective options for identity management and access control. We want to help our customers focus on their core business. We have in this room a lot of security expertise. And I wanted to mention at the end of this conversation there's lots of folks that will be able to answer a lot of questions on security, on single sign-on, on all kinds of issues. But we think that you shouldn't have to be a security expert in your own right to implement uh, security and weave it into the fabric of your environment. We believe to a great extent that that's our job to provide that for you. And we hope we work to come to the rescue to take care of the Linux-related identity management needs for you on your behalf so that it is easier for you to implement really good identity management, access control, single sign-on, the capabilities that you need to feed into corporate governance without having to be an expert in your own right on each of these particular sets of features. So the first vision is authentication. When you think about I identity management, it's, it's authentication. So 
we think, you know, users will come from uh, any, identity, any identity source that you choose. Of course, we have recommendations that when you pick an authoritative source, you try to choose Active Directory or Identity Management, IDM, from, from Red Hat. That you are able to authenticate using different types of credentials. And I think all of us see this everywhere. There are passwords, there are certificates, there are smart cards, there are one-time um, OTP tokens for two-factor authentication. Your users and yourselves, you may have several of these. You, you may be in the position of having to provide the ability to authenticate almost regardless of how the credentials are presented. And we want you to be able to use single sign-on both for the enterprise and for the web apps. Based on many of the various standards that are available for authentication, they're called the authentication schemes. For example, Kerberos, SAML, OpenID Connect. While still being able, of course, to access the systems, the services, and the applications that require the authorization that those various types of authentication schemes bring running on different platforms and different operating systems. So this basically, this basically is the vision of what we are working to provide. And it is a very rich, multi, multivariate society in a way. Think of it as you know, different kinds of credentials, different kinds of applications, different operating systems, the ability to weave this together into a relatively seamless identity management fabric. And this is a sort of a graphic that would illustrate where we are going. That you have users whose credentials are in Active Directory, perhaps. You have users whose credentials are in identity management, possibly you know, in LDAP. That you can represent a trust between the two, between Active Directory and, say, the Linux world with the identity management server. You can have your users come in using passwords, smart cards, CAC cards, PIV cards, tokens, one-time tokens, and basically are able to reach whatever kind of service they need on whatever platform is appropriate for those services. Again, it's a complex environment that we are working to simplify on your behalf. Now, the next piece of the vision is consistent delivery. If you have consistency in the identities and the access uh, for those identities, you can have that information delivered to those systems, services, and applications with the policies. In other words, the policies that allow for um, authorization uh, and privilege escalation across the environment. For example, and I, I think we are all aware, some, some applications require simple password, some require one-time passwords, some require step-up auth authentication. There are often requirements on much what smart cards to use, what attributes to bring, but whatever that is, it would be nice if you could deliver the, authentic the authentication so that the authorization and the policies um, are relatively seamless and it is easy for essentially your users to get access to the services they need with the, I'm going to call it the attributes that are required for them to access that service. And again, this is the way we look at consistent delivery. And you will see, let's be clear, it's the same complex environment. It should be running across the same sets of services and storage, same sets of applications, and again, SSO, both the enterprise level SSO and web-based SSO. And to add to this uh, diagram, the, the arrows that are going from AD to the systems and from IDM to the applications, they are arbitrarily. So actually it's a full mesh of arrows just for the real estate purposes. I haven't drawn them 
across the whole picture, but it is across the whole picture. Yes, but this is supposed to be a presentation, and if, and if you want the graphics and you want to go into detail, just let us know. We uh, definitely have the expertise in the room to do that. Yes? Active Directory, Active Directory? That is a very good question. That is Active Directory in a Windows environment on a Microsoft Windows operating system. What we have done and will continue to do is to provide trust between these two environments. So let's say, for example, and I'm not going to go into too much detail, but let's say that Active Directory is your authoritative source for identities. It's part of your corporate compliance. It's the place that is the, shall I say, the system of record. Well, you may want to use those credentials for users to access the services in the Linux world, and we make that possible. And feel free to ask more questions about that um, towards the end, because it's an area that we've done a lot of work in. And managed security. The, the vision, again, we are getting to the point where we used to talk about the product, the features, the capabilities, the technologies of identity management. We are getting to the point now where the challenge is management. The challenge is the management of identities in a complex, interoperable world. And so we are looking at managed security, and again, a lot of this is about the security. So it's the keys, the certificates, and the secrets for the systems and services and applications that we will be working to automatically provision, track, rotate, and I would say also, if necessarily, delete, remove, or put in abeyance on an as-needed basis to give you the capabilities to really manage those credentials, those secrets, those keys. And this, again, and Dimitri will point out, it is a simplified diagram, but you will see now in the managed security, we have added the keys those little ribbons, those represent the certificates. And the ability to bring all of this together in a rather complex environment so that you are not having to shift from one system to another to provide a relatively secure, managed identity and access control environment. The other piece of this vision, and this is, you have probably heard about this all week long, is DevOps. And we are working to make sure that the, the developers will have the tools and the capabilities they need to add to secure applications, to include in uh, secure development, but then they can be tested, QE'd, and delivered into operations in a similar environment without change. If a developer manages to put together an application with appropriate identity management and access control, but it doesn't run in production, and it's not a lot of use. So we are increasingly working to make that transition from development to production as seamless as possible. And again, this is the view of, with the developer added, as the developer uses the, the tools and capabilities we provide to ensure a level of security in the applications and bring them into a production environment, again, that can be quite complex. I'm going to turn this over to Dimitri now to give you some tips, some tricks, some hints on some of the things that you should think about as you begin to move into centralized management for identity and access control, some of the things that will make it easier as you move into the world of compliance, and some, some things you might want to avoid doing, as well as a much closer look at some of the details of the visions that we've set out. And by now you must know that this one is Dimitri. I, I have a mic, thank you. Um, so uh, we define four goals, right? Four visions that you have seen: the authentication piece, oh, the authentication piece, uh, the uh, con uh, continuous delivery of the identities and policies, uh, key management and cer uh, certificate and and um, 
secrets management as well as enablement of the developer to bring the application from its uh, beginning into the environment where all those security capabilities are uh, built in and available from the first moment and you can transition the application from the developing environment into testing environment into production and they look the same. So that's kind of the goal. So four things. They create some principles that we think are good principles uh, that we want to share with you and that's the guidance on this slide. So first of all, we are in the 15, uh, 16 years into this century. So uh, since the beginning of the century, applications have been developed in the way that they can work with different sources of the identities. Uh, with, with LDAP, pretty much every single decent application supports LDAP in some shape or form. Some are even more advanced. So, applications in the data center can be pointed to the single source of truth. Yes, there are some silos still, but they are getting replaced. So, as we move forward, single source of identities, don't copy your identities around, avoid that. All the compliance stuff, all the audits, it will be much easier if you have single place where the users live, where the credentials live, where the policy is enforced, where the audit is happening, right? So whether it is Active Directory, whether it is IDM, it's your choice, it can be something else. But it is single place. And it makes it very simple when you have an HR system to transition from HR system to that system, right? You just need to copy accounts. You have very simple software. And in most cases, the HR system itself already capable of provisioning and deprovisioning users. So you don't even need to buy third party software that used to be in that space. So think about it. Even if you need, have the needs, what are the real needs in this place? You can buy or use much simpler software than you needed in the past. So just think about it. We are not playing in this place. This is not our domain, right? We are low in the stack, but we want to give you a, a, a guidance and understanding of what you can do, right? When, when you have a single source of identities, your propagation of those identities becomes very simple. So as I mentioned, no copying password around, Compliance, right? You have one place where everything is enforced and <coughs> passing PCIs, TIGs, all that stuff, keepers becomes much, much easier, right? Okay, single sign-on is good. So you still have multiplexity of the systems, multiplexity of the applications, different protocols, different authentication methods, different workflows. So you want the, your credentials to be strong. So, because not only it, it's the key to the kingdom, it's now this smaller set of the credentials in one place, so you want the key to the kingdom to be strong, but you also want to reuse it as much as possible once you've proven that you, who you are, so that you are not challenged 10 times a, a minute when you are accessing different things. So single sign-on is good. Passwords in files. When you build your applications, think about how the parts of the application, the applications are complex. It's not even three-tier applications anymore. It's so many tiers, so many components, so many pieces talking to each other, using different protocols. And every single communication between every single endpoint needs to be authenticated. So what is the simplest thing to do? Yeah, just let's stick a password into the configuration file. Who cares, right? Well, don't do that, please. You've been warned. So think about when you build the applications, when you combine pieces of the infrastructure, when you stitch things together, 
how they are going to talk to each other, how they are going to authenticate. In many cases, there is a capability to use something stronger than a password in, in the configuration file. But it requires a little bit more um, effort on your side to provision a Kerberos key or provision a certificate and place it in some, in some place. Yes, there are tools that will help you to solve this problem. So don't be afraid to move forward and avoid passwords in the configuration files. Automate your operations. We are in the era when applications need to be deployed continuously. Changes are happening in real time. Some uh, applications online, the, the, um, the commits happen thousands of times per hour. And there is continuous integration, continuous deployment of the applications to serve the business needs of the uh, enterprise. So everything needs to be automated. So pick the tools that allow you to build automation, that allow you to create whatever you need to do in a simple, repeatable way. And the identity management infrastructure needs to scale to the same level of what your business application needs to scale. It needs to meet the needs of your business. And you can do that only if you have automation. So pick the tools that allow you to do that. And integrate applications. So that's um, about application being not by itself, uh, being a member of the bigger fabric, of the bigger ecosystem. And what connects application to, uh, applications to each other? The identities, the identities of the users that consume those applications, that navigate between them, that applications behave against each other on behalf of the users, the service accounts that are associated with those applications, they are also the identities, right? So all that needs to be integrated. All that needs to be thought through, and the rules about those identities and how these identities can interact need to be thought through and connected and managed so that your applications are a part of the business fabric. And for that, we see that we need to provide identity management fabric and tools that would solve your needs, the needs of your business. And that leads us to identity management fabric. So who is familiar with IDM? Who, who, okay. Thank you. So in the core of our identity management vision and story is IDM. So this is the domain controller for Linux Unix environments that allows you to manage Linux clients the way you want to manage them and the way they need to be managed. It allows you to uh, propagate policies for those clients the way how these clients uh, expect them to be done. It, it can manage certificates for those, it can provide auto mounts and other things that other central identity management systems do not provide, especially Active Directory. If you try to connect Linux systems into Active Directory directly, you have limited capabilities. You can authenticate, you can uh, get identities, but some of the advanced policies uh, thing, if policies and certificates and secrets, this is not something that you can manage. IDM solves that problem. So, and it can be interoperable with Active Directory. We will talk about that a little bit later, but in the previous slides you have seen that there is, there is trust. So, IDM is the core of our fabric. Whether you use it as by itself, as the storage for the users, as the authentication oracle, or if you use Active Directory as Authentication Oracle, IDM still uh, has a great role because it manages the policies for the Linux environment and exposes Active Directory users to the Linux environment with single sign-on. So, 
The second piece is SSSD. So SSSD is the client-side component. It's a part of multiple Linux distributions. It's a part of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. It allows connecting a Linux system to different identity and authentication sources. So it can work with IDM. It can work with Active Directory. It can work with Kerberos, uh, Kerberos and LDAP. So multiple different identity sources. It's not necessarily just IDM. And it understands very complex setups, like if IDM is in trust relationships with Active Directory. Yes, there is a question here. So SSSD has a module uh, plugin for Apache? The question is, does SSSD have a module for Apache? We'll talk about that, hold this question. Thank you. OK. So this is the core of our identity, fa identity management fabric, and that's probably what you heard about. You probably heard about SSSD, and some of you know about IDEA. So that's the core. So now around the core, there are extended capabilities that we started to build that you might not know about. KDC proxy. The use case for KDC proxy is I have a client outside of my firewall that needs to participate in the Kerberos authentication inside my infrastructure. So how I can do Kerberos without poking the hole in my firewall? Well, you can KDC proxy as a part of IDM server. You can proxy Kerberos traffic over HTTPS. Several years ago, Microsoft came out with a paper for, for the protocol. They implemented the protocol. We implemented the same protocol, so now it's interoperable with Microsoft implementation. So now you can send Kerberos traffic over HTTPS if you want. GSS proxy solves two major problems. One is if you have a Kerberos-enabled application, network-facing, and it is being attacked, and it can access the Kerberos keys, the application itself, and it is attacked, and the attacker um, takes control of the application, it takes control of the key, and can impersonate application, and now can interact with other parts of your infrastructure on behalf of application. You don't want that. So GSS proxy is a service running on the operating system that separates application from the keys. So even if application is jeopardized, the keys are not. That's one part. The second part is that the keys and tickets related to the keys are renewed as needed. So you don't need to worry about the expir expiration of the tickets. And where it comes to play is in the NFS case. NFS, secure NFS, Kerberos-enabled NFS. You want the client to start a job and leave, log out, and come in a week and check the status of the job. And you don't want to worry that the ticket will expire in the middle and your uh, mount will get, get stale. GSS proxy takes, uh, takes um, care of that, and the tickets are renewed as needed, so the NFS mount stays all the way. It's available in RHEL 7. Not in RHEL 6, won't be backported. OK, moving on. User portal. We have multiple requests for having functionality like self-registration or password reset. Uh, we, we have been considering adding that into IDM. So if this is something that you are interested in, let us know. So any things that are in red are still in consideration. So if you're interested, open a support case. That's the best way to communicate to us. Um, session recording. We heard a lot of um, interest in audit in general. So we are building the capability to collect logs and to collect uh, information from different nodes and from the server itself. But on top of that, we want to provide a way of recording a session, a terminal session on the managed machine, delivering it to the central server, and providing a way of correlating what has been happening in the session 
with the audit D trail, the deep uh, audit log from the system, from kernel, so that you know when the user started a script and on the screen nothing happening, in the background things have been happening, the, the files have been modified, directories have been touched, executables spawned and so on, so you can detect malicious activity that has been happening. So it's something that we are working on. We are interested in your feedback. We're interested in your participation in trying that as it becomes ready. CS and signing. So as we move forward, we will build more and more capabilities related to the certificate system into IDM. For example, managing smart cards, deploying smart cards, supporting HSMs, and things like that. So this is, we will be adding more and more pieces of the certificate system into, uh, into IDM. Probably as add on, we don't know. We, we would have to figure the business model out. So no promises that it will be free, but we, this is where we're going. Another thing is signing. So we have all the components to do the signing. So uh, potentially we might end up providing some kind of signing service out of IDM. So there are different use cases. You build your uh, containers, you build your jars, you build your VMs, you want to sign them and you want to ver val validate that only signed content is distributed with, within your uh, internal uh, content repositories and Docker, Docker indexes or whatever indexes we'll have by that time. So signing might become a service there. So that's the extended ecosystem, yes. Realm D is there, it exists. So Realm D allows you to join client system into uh, Active Directory domain or IDM domain, depending upon what it detects. It's there starting Realm 7. So it's sort of a small utility that I don't even show in here. So it's like, it's a part of SSSD piece in this picture, in my mind. I was just, at yeah. a high level, that is to make joining to one or the other of the servers, Active Directory or Identity Management, very easy to yes. join the client. Please. You mentioned secure NSS. Uh, do I need at that point that seven Kerberos? Are uh, those, those, those two components that also need IDM? So the question was, if you want secure NFS, what do I need? So if you want NFS secure with Kerberos, then you need some kind of Kerberos server. IDM is a Kerberos server, and what is neat is that it allows you to easily enroll the clients, provision the, the keys and key tabs. So the setup is very simple. Can you use Active Directory? Sure. Can you use MIT Kerberos or Heimdall Kerberos? Sure. But Again, pick your, pick your tools. This can be really easily automated. Okay, so moving forward, the next ring is enabled, enablers. So now that we build the, the core and extenders around the core, we want other parts of the data center to be integrated. So we need to enable other parts of the data center to work well with uh, what, what, what we built. So the first thing that we built several years ago was CertMonger. CertMonger is the client-side component that allows you to fetch, track, and renew certificates in an automated fashion. So it can connect to IDM, it can connect to a couple other certificate authorities, it can connect to a Microsoft CA using SAP, protocol, it's a little bit manual. It, when it works with IDM, it's fully automated and it can fetch certificates for your hosts and services and applications. And it can track where the certificates, when the certificate expires. And when the certificate expires, it will fetch a new one. So you don't need to worry about 
walking around and updating certificates. Apache and Nginx modules. This is towards your question. So we have been building over the last several years a set of Apache modules that allow you to integrate your applications that are built on top of Apache uh, with Identity Fabric. So there are modules that integrate with SSSD. Yes, there are modules that take advantage of PAM stack. There are modules that take advantage of the identity information that SSSD provides. So there, are, there is a whole page about that. If you go to freeapa.org and search for web app authentication, there is a big article about that. It gives you examples. It gives you a lot of guidance of how to build applications using that methodology. There are multiple slide decks from the different presentations and different conferences where we went and presented in details the idea and how you do that. So I'm not going to get into the details of that. We can follow up on, on the implementation. Yes? Does that support the Kerberos tickets too? It supports forms based, which can be password or uh, OTP. It's Kerberos, it's SAML, it's OpenID Connect that is coming in RHEL 7.3, uh, it's uh, certificates pretty much everything that you need. Okay, okay moving forward. Uh, another big piece of the puzzle is key clock or Red Hat SSO. So this piece allows single sign-on and federation on the web level, on, between your applications in the web ecosystem. And uh, it just released a couple weeks ago, Red Hat SSO. Uh, the key clock is the uh, community version of it. So we are actively working with the key clock to tie in into SSSD and uh, work uh, on the very advanced setups with trusts. Uh, but right now, key clock can integrate with Active Directory, can integrate with IDM as an LDAP. Uh, OLDAP, so you already can take advantage of the key clock for your federation uh, and single sign-on. Custodia. In your infrastructure, you need to deliver secrets. So how the secrets are piped between your endpoints and the central server. Custodia is the server that provides, or a series of servers that provides access control around piping of this and delivery of the certificates. It's very important in very dynamic environments like uh, OpenShift, for example, uh, when you have containers being spawned in, on different nodes dynamically and you need to deliver secrets to the applications that moving around your infrastructure in a dynamic way. So this is something that we are working in the community. Sandwich for domain controller. So we are considering bringing it in for the purpose of running um, Windows and Mac payloads. So if you decide that IDM is your authoritative source and your users are there, but you have some subset of Windows and Mac systems that you need to integrate into your fabric, uh, Samba domain controller would be uh, the gateway into Windows Mac world. We need your feedback whether you really need it or not and when. So please come back to us and tell us what is the priority and what is the significance of that feature. So um, next is Red Hat product portfolio. And when we are talking about portfolio, it is OpenStack, OpenShift, uh, cloud form, satellite, everything that we have. So it integrates into the fabric through Apache modules or key clock. So this is all being set up in such a way that you can uh, get automated provisioning of the keys, automated enrollment, single sign-on between the Red Hat products. And we have a roadmap for every single uh, product to get all the way integrated. It's a long story, so 
we are moving. But we want to do the same with the third party application. So if you are building your applications, we would love to work with you and enable you to be integrated in the same way. So to help you to do that, we actually have a developer environment put together that allows you to develop an application with all this fabric ready for you at your fingertips so that you can start developing with identities and single sign-on capabilities available for you when you start from hello world. You already have authentication set up for you. And you can do SAML, you can do Kerberos, you can do forms-based OTP, everything for containers deployed for you. You can do that from day one. And last but not least, disk encryption problems. You want to make sure that you can manage your underlying um, volumes and encryption keys for those volumes in a central way, in, in a secure way. So the technology as a Tang allows you to have network bound disk encryption, which means that you had disk encryption on your servers and servers rebooted and usually you have to go and enter your password, but with Tang server on the network, the clients will boot automatically. And we have a very nice video of the demo of that in the booth, so you're welcome to come and see for yourself how it works. Okay, so upcoming features. Uh, I don't know how many, uh, how much time we have, and do we want to start questions and not dive into what's coming, how, how we want to do it? Okay. Uh, move forward, okay. So features, what is coming this fall? Performance and scalability improvements in IDM and SSD, we heard a lot of feedback in different setups where we need to uh, make our performance and scalability better. So topology management, there were a lot of questions of how to manage topology, what are the best practices, so now there will be Topology managed in the UI, you will see your replicas, you will see which replica has which components, and you will be able to drag and drop replication agreements in the UI. And build your infrastructure this way. Yes? That's IPA 4.3, is that going to be in the realm 7.3? 4.4 is planned for 7.3, yes. What were Yes. Okay, DNS locations. So finally you would be able to say that set of my IDM servers is my data center and my clients in this data center please connect only to those servers and not go over the ocean to other data center if not needed. Okay, lightweight sub-CAs. I have different purposes for certificates. I want to issue certificates for Puppet. I want to issue certificates for uh, my... Um, VPN, I want to issue it for my devices. I don't want to use the same profile and the same certificate authority for those domains of use. So that I don't want to bother myself with setting access control. I want to trust only one uh, CA for, for Puppet. And I don't want to be able to take certificate for Puppet and use it for VPN or for something else. If you have one CA issuing certificates for all sorts of different purposes, you need to have access control. If you have different CAs and different trust in those chains, then you don't need to. So lightweight CAs, I want a CA, and seconds later, you got a CA. You don't need to install anything, it's in there. Okay, authentication indicators. We have an ability to do two-factor authentication over Kerberos protocol. So with that, and by the way, this is the only commercially available implementation of that, of the two-factor authentication over Kerberos. But now we can mark the tickets that were acquired with single-factor or two-factor with different indicators. 
so that you can make policy decisions and say, to access this service, I need two-factor authentication. And to access this service, it's okay to have single-factor authentication. And you can have access control based on the level of the authentication that you conducted. Authentication indicators allow you to say, these are my hosts that require two-factor authentication, and these are not. And you can do it. Smart card authentication support for Active Directory users. In 7.2, there was a capability to do smart card authentication for users managed in IDM, but now we can do it for Active Directory users from the trusted Active Directory domain. Um, there are some improvements for Active Directory integration, the performance, UPNs, support of the UPNs, support of the external trusts. So uh, that's a different way of, uh, it's trusting a single domain in a fo forest. Not the whole forest, but just a single domain. Um, to help troubleshoot the SSSD configuration, there are a lot of new tools. There is ability to plug in snippets of the configuration and merge configuration so that you can do really interesting automation things with, with SSSD. And by the way, SSSD is also being put into a container. Uh, clients in a DDNS domain in case of trust. There were a lot of questions and there are still questions. If you put IDM and you want to use trust, but you don't want to rename your clients because the clients are in the same DNS zone as Active Directory and you can't because you run business applications and it's just, it's just, it is. So how you can take advantage of IDM for those systems without renaming them? Uh, we did some research, we put some papers, and there is a blog post that is coming any day. It's already written, I have it on my machine. Uh, our marketing guys need just to push it. It explains how to do, how to take advantage of the systems that can't be renamed in that trust environment and what you can do to really accomplish something similar to single sign-on. So it lists the requirements and shows what you can do, gives you different options. So that's what is coming, uh, features and efforts in the pipeline, this is down. Um, so external authentication and web UI, this is ability to authenticate with smart cards, uh, ability to authenticate with SAML assertion. Currently you can authenticate either with Kerberos or with uh, username and password or username and uh, password and OTP into, uh, into the web UI of IDM, but we want to make it uh, seamless to authenticate with other methods. SSSD secrets as a service, so uh, there was a custodia component that we talked about briefly to deliver the secrets, so SSSD will provide an interface uh, and will be backed by custodia to deliver the secrets to the application running on the system. DNS SAC support, it's in there, it's tech preview, it has been experimental, now it's tech preview. At some point we want it to be uh, fully supported. So uh, if you want to use it, try it. Uh, session recording, we talked about session recording, so we're working, again, your feedback, contribution, testing, trying uh, use cases would be really helpful. Uh, collection of logs and audit, uh, I mentioned that, that's what we want to do for the nodes, for the SSSD logs, for the audit logs, uh, for the sessions that we record, consolidate that, uh, show uh, in, in a nice GUI what is happening in your environment. Um, network bound disencryption, we talked about that. Um, and we are putting IDM and SSSD in containers so that you can use it uh, in, a, in very dynamic modern environments. Uh, you can use it for development, like we had the container-based development environment that takes advantage of that, but it also uh, can be uh, used in your, uh, in, in your own enterprise to run those uh, functions inside uh, the containers on OpenShift, for example. Deployments. So, um, there are several types of deployments that you can have. You can have 
Active Directory and SSSD, this is direct integration, so you just take your Linux clients, connect them to Active Directory. So this is AD and SSSD. If you focus on IDM as your authoritative source, then uh, you can connect SSSD as a client to IDM. If you want the best of two worlds, it is IDM and SSSD and Active Directory Trust and then application integration. So I have the slides for each of them, but we don't have time for that. So questions? Yes, please. SSSD, SSSD. is that running as a service or is that a client that runs on every client's Is SSSD a service or a client? It is a conglomerate of services running on every client that provide identity and authentication capabilities for the applications running on the box. So you, you got a daemon running local? Yes, there are multiple daemons. And those daemons are talking directly to um, um, Active Directory? They are talking to Active Directory or to IDM, they are talking Kerberos, they are talking LDAP, yes. Okay, by the way, if you would like to pursue that, um, yeah, we can, can come can down to the booth, the booth, we can follow up. Yes. Uh, gentleman in the red shirt, please. Uh, quick question. So, so the trust between uh, Microsoft ID and IDM, do I need to install anything at all at the Microsoft server? That's one question. And the other question is, who initiates the connection? Is it Windows trying to connect to IDM? Is IDM connected to Windows or, or both? Okay. Uh, so do you need to install anything on the Windows side? No. You don't need to install anything. Who initiates the connection? Linux initiates the connection to Windows to establish the trust. Effectively, you need to grab your Active Directory administrator, bring him to the terminal window or web UI of IDM to type the password. That's the only interaction that you need. That's it. Um, um, you mentioned that Keycloak can speak directly to AD. Did I get that correct? Yes. Uh, where would be the advantage to bring IDM in between? Or wouldn't you do that? So um, the question is, what is the advantage of uh, running Keycloak off Active Directory directly or of IDM? So it depends upon your infrastructure. Uh, if uh, you have a lot of Linux infrastructure and you want to centrally manage your Linux infrastructure in a consistent way, then running Keycloak on the Linux managed machine makes sense, then putting Linux machine into IDM makes sense, and then taking advantage of what SSSD on that machine already provides you makes sense rather than having a parallel connection and parallel identity. You can do that, but so another thing moving forward is that SSSD will grow the writable interface. So that key clock would be able to use it for provisioning. So, but that's future, it's not even on the slides. That's like an idea. Do you have a date yet? <laughs> <laughs> um, just back to your point, adding on to what Dimitri said, another benefit is that um, a lot of times people who own active directory and people who own your Linux environment are not the same May I and another gentleman <laughs> on the I want to be able to manage um, my users and policies in IDM and just the only thing I want from AD is just password authentication. That's how it works. Um, I'm up to that point now in my uh, installation and I'm able to K in it and authenticate, but I'm having trouble um, being able to log in. You know, Let's follow up in the booth because we, we need to drill down. I, I, I will be well, glad. Well, I, I don't want all the steps, but is that a SSSD configuration uh, option? And the other question is, do I, I probably need like ID mapping as well to, to connect the users from AD to IDM, just at a high level? Yes, so 
you need to decide how you manage POSIX. POSIX can be managed inside IDEA, uh, inside uh, in IDEA Active Directory possible. if you have the extensions. If you don't, there are two options. You can have algorithmic uh, mapping, which is based on the identities, seeds of uh, entities that you have in Active Directory. So you need ID mapping and the authentication piece is an SSSD yes. configuration option then? Yes, yes. But details, let's talk in the booth yeah, I can I draw the details. Okay, there was one gentleman here. Okay, two gentlemen, please. You need to decide where your users live, right? So if your users live in Active Directory, then there will be no users in IDM. So you, if you want to do the synchronization first, but then you are duplicating the accounts, you are dealing with different parts. So it's really an architectural decision that you make. But what you can do is you can do direct integration for some clients going to directly to Active Directory, stand up IDM in parallel, establish trust, and as you are ready to move the clients into that environment, start deploying clients into that environment. So that's the okay. deployment strategy that would be recommended. I think we have time, I think, for about two more questions. I know that this gentleman, and I'm assuming you're all gentlemen, we have an open okay. RFE. So the question was, can, uh, uh, can we respect uh, Kerberos authentication in SUDA? The answer, not yet. We have an RFE open. It's in the list, in the backlog of the things that we need to do. Yes. Yes. So my question is that, let's say we go uh, with the, the roadmap uh, and IDM, SSSD, and uh, AD Trust, and you know, that's going to require uh, RHEL 7.3 or later, and now we have a bunch of RHEL 6. Uh, what's the interoperability, and, and are you tied together between RHEL 6 and RHEL 7 as you question. increase the functionality and capabilities in IDM? Sure. This is a great question about the compatibility between different versions and server and client. So we recommend the latest server, but the client can be as old as I would say 6.6, 6.7. Six, 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 uh, so what has been happening is we were putting the functionality in 7 and porting it back to 6. So 7.0 is 6.6, six, 7.1 six, is 6.7, six, 7.2 seven, seven, is 6.8. Six, but now, 6 is in production phase 2, so no more enhancements, only maintenance. So the features that are coming in 7.3 are not going to be back, backported to 6.9. So, so, oh, so I think that that's clear that we have made provisions for bringing the uh, RHEL 6 and RHEL 5 clients into a 7 server. Uh, at this point, I'd like to invite any of you who have additional questions on any of these issues to catch Dimitri or me uh, and visit us in the booth downstairs. And I thank you very much for your time and attention. But we will thank you even more for your feedback and participation. Thank you.